call the little book room. You're both invited to stop by and see it too, if you'd like. I think I know that place. Is that the uh, new club on M Street with the disco ball? No. And you go to a club with a disco ball? What is this, 1978? Hey, retro, baby. Everything old is new again. Some things should never been new to begin with. A disco ball is one of them. I have this feeling we've digressed. So what is this little bookworm club? Deaf adults and older kids read to little kids who are deaf, signing them stories, help them learn to read. Sounds noble. And Sue and the newly 13-year-old, therefore officially one of the older kids, Amanda, are the club's two newest members. It's like when we were kids and we had story time at the library, only this is one-on-one. -on -one. I love story time. And nap time. Oh, it's snack time. Come to think of it, I still love story time, nap time, and snack time. Lunch time, people. And Jack's buying. I also like lunch time. And I believe I'm feeling particularly famished. I'm a little peckish myself. This is very generous of you. And why is it you think I'm buying? Because I believe you're the one that took down Frankie Gennard. Oh, did I mention Frankie's agreed to cooperate with us? You're kidding. The AUSA's drawing up the agreement right now. Once it's all in order, Frankie's agreed to give us the name of his mysterious boss. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, small-time bad guy Frankie Gennard has agreed to testify against his nefarious supplier. That shadowy figure on whom we've yet to shed light and to whom we've yet to give a name, that clandestine criminal, that indiscernible weapons dealer, the one we've come to know as the Uber bad guy. I'll happily fill you in on the details over lunch. Suddenly, I'm starved. I caught the guy. Doesn't it seem like you should all be buying me lunch? It's not for you to understand, simply to have your plastic and a gracious smile at the ready. <sighs> You're halfway there. <laughs> Excuse me. Can I help you? Um, I'm actually looking for her. You're Sue Thomas, aren't you? Uh, William Hackford. It's nice to meet you. You come very highly recommended. Recommended for what? Um, is there some place that we could talk privately? Uh, sure. I did an extensive background check on you, and I'm very impressed. Did your check tell you I, uh, was a Riz at dodgeball when I was in seventh grade. Actually, I'd like to talk to you about possibly coming to work for me. We have an opening in my department, and you've been suggested to me as someone who'd be perfect to fill it. What kind of opening? Senior investigative analyst in one of the top three field offices in the Bureau. All the other analysts in counterterrorism in the division would report to you. Wow. You would work directly for me. You're the intelligence division ASAC of the New York office. Thank you for clearing that up. I, I mean, I, uh, for some reason, I thought you were from here. Well, you'd travel down here periodically. Part of your responsibilities would be briefing members of Congress, as well as other high-ranking officials, including the director and the attorney general on occasion. But you'd spend most of your time in New York or traveling to any of a number of cities throughout the world. I should also tell you that this job has not been officially posted yet, so I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't tell anyone else about it at this point. And we've come to you in a preemptive mood, so to speak. So, do you have any interest at all in my offer? I, I guess. I mean, yes, I'm very honored that you'd consider me for such a position, and I'd have to be crazy not to at least consider it, right? I almost forgot. We have the best doggy treats in the Bureau. So if you have any influence, you might want to use it. If I live to be a hundred and never see the seven wonders That'll be all right Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes
And who ever thought bell bottoms and platform shoes would come back? Makes disco balls seem not so bad. It's all bad. Excuse me. Hi. Would you happen to have another credit card? This one was turned out. Oh, no, that can't be. Yeah, I tried it three times. Then when I called the credit card company, they made me cut it up when I was on the phone with them. Sorry. You cut it up? They made me. I'm with the FBI. Do they know that? Because if they do, it did not seem to matter. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> this one should be OK. Yep. And if that doesn't work, don't cut it up. I really am with the FBI. Ah, uh, the credit craze of the new millennium. It can take anyone down. Yep. Just took Bobby down for about six lunches he wasn't planning on buying. I do not have a credit problem. That's what they all to say. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks. Yep, that's it. Someone has been charging stuff online using my credit card number. They got my verification code and everything. Ouch. Any idea how? No idea. Well, it could be from anywhere. A, a waiter who used it, a store clerk. If someone had it in their hands, it's easy. Just copy down the pertinent numbers. No wonder. You have an idea who it might be? No, I'm checking to see if they got my other credit card numbers, too. Oh, that'd be bad. Very bad. I don't believe it. They hijacked my MasterCard, too. That's bad. It's maxed out. Uh-oh. What uh-oh? If they have both your card numbers but not your cards, it could very well be someone who's tracked your card use through your computer. And you mean, like, spyware? Yeah. They record your keystrokes, then go on a spending spree. Oh, that's bad. Do you do any banking online? Yeah, that's bad. I suggest you get on the phone and start canceling things. Like your summer vacation. You might not be able to afford it. Whoever did this is going to pay. He picked the wrong FBI agent to mess with. H have you seen my post? Uh, so, are you going to tell me or not? Tell you right. I think she's being evasive. I mean about that very good-looking William person and what it was he wanted to talk to you about today. OK, but you can't tell anyone. Not that there's anything to tell, really. It's all very preliminary. What is? He offered me a job. What job? Senior investigative analyst. Wow. That's what I said, except for one thing. Yeah, you wouldn't be working with us anymore. One besides that, I'd be living in New York. Oh. I see. I... What did you say? I told him I'd think about it. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'm thinking. <clears throat> I got to go. I, I'm late, and Amanda's going crazy. We'll talk about it later. Yeah.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thomas, I understand you're thinking of taking a new job. You didn't hear it from me. Do you have our place bugged? So it's true then. So you're not denying that you have our place bugged? Relax, I heard it from Candy and transfers. She has designs on me. Thinks I'd make quite a catch. Can't say she's wrong. I want her number. I'm calling her, and if she denies telling you, then I'm having the debuggers come to our apartment this afternoon. I was approached about an opportunity to be the counterterrorism senior investigative analyst in the New York field office. Wow. Yeah. That seemed to be the prevailing reaction. It's an A-plus plum assignment. It's good for you. Can't think of anybody who'd be better. Congratulations. I had no idea. They told me they'd prefer it if I didn't tell anyone. Other than Lucy. Hey, I think it's great. I assume that you'll be taking it. I told him I'd think about it. Jack. Isn't Billy Borelli the informant that gave you information on Frankie Gennard that convinced Frankie to make a deal? Yeah. Did Frankie Gennard know it was Borelli? No. Frankie only knew that I knew how his whole operation worked, and that's why he agreed to deal. Why? Billy Borelli's dead. What? Killed this morning. He was a professional hit. Nobody knew anything about him. Oh, my computer. Tara, log me onto my CIA account. Come in. When does it say I accessed the account last? Okay. Yesterday. I didn't log in yesterday. Well, somebody did, using your password. Maybe the people who were recording keystrokes on my computer were after more than just my credit cards. That's exactly why we can't access the Bureau's computers online. But you can the CIA task force account, and I did. What we know for sure is we got an informant who's dead and a suspect in custody who's supposed to deliver up his weapon-selling boss to us on a silver platter by signing a deal this morning. Which now isn't gonna happen. Without Billy Borelli as a witness, there's no way I can make a case against Frankie Gennard. And I'll be required to tell him that before he signs. And there's no way Frankie will give us uber bad guy unless it's to keep himself out of jail. Definitely a professional job. Clean, in quick, out quick. How you doing? I'm the building super. Oh, thanks for making yourself available. No problem. What can you tell us about Billy Borelli? Not much to tell you. He lived here about six months, didn't make no trouble, paid his rent on time. In my line of work, that's about as good as it gets. Somebody wants to kill one of my tenants. Why couldn't it have been the deadbeat in 3A? The guy hadn't paid his rent in two months. There's no justice in this world. We, uh, we understand that you think you might have seen the murderer. I was out here working. I see a guy get out of a car and go inside. Next thing, I get a call from old lady Woodbridge, and she says, uh, there's noise going on up in Borelli's apartment. So I went right up there, and I found the body. Could you describe the guy? Yeah, he, he was a white guy, um, average height, maybe mid-30s, dark hair, pretty good build on him. Not a bad-looking guy. <laughs> Not that I noticed that type of thing. Hey, you, you can ask Mrs. Woodbridge. She said she saw him. Yeah, we already did. She thought he was nice looking, too. I, I take great comfort in knowing that Mrs. Woodbridge and I have the same taste in men. <laughs> what about his car? Well, it was a dark green uh, four-door, but I got the first three numbers of the license plate, 317, St. Patrick's Day. See, I have this thing for numbers and dates. I, I try not to, but uh, I can't help myself.
Amanda does have a good point. Maybe this new job is a chance to do something really great. Something I wouldn't have even known I wanted to do because I had never done it before. On the other hand, or should I say Paul, I already like the job I have and the people I work with, where I live. Do I really want to give that up? So leaving the dog treats out of the equation, what do you think? about where I am. Here it is. Brand new top line DVD recorder. 1310 Bellflower is where I brought it. What'd you say this Jack Hudson look like? He's kind of a weird looking wimpy fella. We won't tell him he said that. You ordered a fondue set? People still do that? Not still. Again. Got one for the wife for Christmas. Everything old is new again. Can you tell us what the man looked like? Uh, well, he uh, kind of looked like a beatnik from the 60s. You know, skinny with a beard. Thank you. You've been very helpful. Oh, uh, one last thing, mate. You ever consider a disco ball to go with that fondue set? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember this guy. It's not every day you deliver a 60 inch plasma screen TV. And I assume he'd have to sign for it personally when it was delivered? Oh, yeah. Can you describe him? That's a scrawny guy, dark hair, scruffy beard. That sounds like the Jack Huston I know. Clearly, just one guy collecting the goods. Every description of Jack was the same. And not the most flattering description. Somebody out there is giving you a bad name. And whoever's in the shopping spree is not the hitman. Descriptions are very different. Righto, so the question is, are they connected? Working together, do they even know each other? We're running both descriptions through our databases to see what kind of matches we can come up with, but it's a long shot. In the meantime, tell the credit card companies to keep my cards on a priority list and to notify us immediately if they're used again. We gotta get this guy before I have no credit rating at all. Uh, if everyone has a minute, there's something I need to say. This has been one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. But I've taken the job in New York. I'll be leaving as soon as they cut my orders. Well, yeah. I guess that still works. When you, when you actually say it out loud, it's suddenly real. You're gonna do great. I want to thank you for being such a great family. And for all the support you've given me throughout my time here. You know, you are always a hold of a very special place in my heart. Great opportunity, Sue. You must be very excited. Yeah. Congratulations, Thomas. We'll all be able to say we knew you when. That was Metro PD. They got a visual on the hitman's license plate. They're watching the car as we speak. It's about 10 minutes from here. Let's go. Got my gun up. You had me.
you and Sue talked any more about her leaving? No, not really. I think it's pretty hard for the both of us. I know on our last day I'm gonna lose it. Not very becoming of an FBI agent. If you cry too, I won't look so bad. Not coming in for that reason. No goodbyes to me. Never liked them. I suggest you look on the bright side. Thank you for your input, Mr. Sunshine. I'm simply alluding to the fact that there could be some unintended personal benefits for our Ms. Thomas, as well as the obvious professional ones. Since she and Jack will no longer be in the same unit, she will now be able to date him. Well, I, I suppose it could be a possibility if it was something they both wanted to do. Would that be something Jack might want to do? I don't know. It's not something we've ever talked about. Men never talk about anything important. What? That's something you and Sue have talked about? No. Not really. No? No. <sighs> Who needs to talk about it? We work in the same room with them. If you all haven't picked up on their obvious chemistry, then, well, I suggest a career change might be in order. Whoever would have believed it would be Miles who play the romance card? I'm a Renaissance man. Underneath this macho exterior is a sensitive artisan. Morning. Anything new come in last night? No. I've got leads out to five offices on background stuff. Nothing back yet. Morning. Morning. Are you okay? Yeah, fine. I'm glad you're still with us today. Uh, yeah, me too. So you thought at all about where you're going to live in New York? No, I haven't thought that far yet. Well, I have some friends in the city. If you want, I can see if they have any leads on a place. Thanks. Yeah. Jack. I just got a notification. A delivery of another large screen TV. It's supposed to be made to an address on M Street. Purchase with your credit card. How many big screen TVs does this joker need? Real Jack Hudson would be happy with just one. You wouldn't be looking for Jack Hudson, would you? As a matter of fact, we are. You know it? As luck would have it, I am him. Saw you drive up. Wondered if you might be delivering my TV. They said it'd be delivered today. And now it has. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? <laughs> we would need to see some ID. And if you'll sign on the dotted line, it's all yours. No problem. Yep. Thanks, yeah, I'm always happy to give the John Hancock when there's a nice gift waiting on the other side of door number one. How you doing? What the? Uh... Jack the phony Hudson? Let me check the real Hudson. Admittedly, the resemblance is uncanny. My real name is Chaz Hilmer. This whole thing started when I was contacted by somebody who wanted me to hack into your personal computer. Who contacted you? I don't know his name. The only way we ever communicated was online, email. What was the email address? Tapper at freemailnet.org. Did he tell you specifically what he was looking for? He didn't say, and I didn't ask. I was just hired to get him inside the firewall of your computer. And getting inside the firewall would make passwords, encryption codes, and a whole lot of other stuff accessible. I guess. Also, credit card numbers. He told me I could use them as long as I waited 48 hours before I did. So you, uh, treated yourself to a little shopping spree. And now you're an accessory to murder. I, I, I bought stuff. That's, that's all. Yeah, but your partner did a little more. However, we might be willing to make a deal with you. What kind of deal? You provide our computer person with some information, and we put Trapper at freemailnet.org in jail instead of you. So, uh, what did Amanda say when you told her you were leaving? I haven't told her yet. Those tears aren't from the onions, are they? You 
remember when we first met. I was dating Miles. Now I know why you're crying. You've helped me become the person that I am. The person that I like a lot more than I used to. Dog is excluded. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. But I'm so happy for you. <sighs> yes, you fuzzy guy, I'll miss you too. That's it. We've got him. It's not what I was expecting. Me neither. Got anything? Actually, yes, we do. But I don't think it's who you're expecting. Clearly, he's not armed. Still, lest we forget, he did kill a man. Or it would seem more likely he had him killed. You know, that, that should really be more a pas de bourree than a chasse. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, finish! Chasse, ball change, chenet, step, hat, siddle, turn, swivel, turn, five, six, seven, eight! It's not that hard. Excuse me. I'm teaching. We can see that. Are you Greg Gilborn? It's Gregory. And yes, I am. Then you're just the man we wanted to see. Although we are dance fans, it's uh, really more your other job that brings us here. Uh, other job? You know, illegal arms sales to unsavory types. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce Tapper at freemailnet.org. FBI, Greg. We're gonna want you to come with us. And although it's true, you will be going to prison. The really good news is you won't have to give up dancing. You'll just have a different set of partners for the next few decades. Maybe they'll have a disco ball. Hands behind your back, please. Oh, boy. I guess if you're a weapons dealer intent on destroying America's way of life, a ballet studio owner makes a great cover. To be precise, it was um, modern dance, not ballet. Ah, yes, modern dance. He really was intent on destroying America's way of life. Actually, as it turns out, Gregory, a.k.a. Uber Bad Guy, became a very light-on-his-feet weapons broker, all in the pursuit of the American theatrical dream. He was trying to finance a Broadway show, a dance musical, of course. And you know how expensive those can be. All about a boy, some tap shoes, and a dream. Sounds like a winner. Unfortunately, the bright lights of Broadway blinded him to the realities of felony law. Mm, been the downfall of many a young Tommy Toon wannabe. Proving once again that showbiz is no place for amateurs. Oh, well, I guess it's time for my curtain call. Thank you. You've been a wonderful audience. I'll see you at home. I have some things I need to finish up. 
So? So? I guess I better get home, too. I'll see you tomorrow. I guess I won't be saying that much longer. I'm Mr. Thomas, your new special project. Um, I'm Jack Hudson. You're officially assigned to our task force. I don't believe it. <laughs> Here is where the road divides. Here is where we realize the sculpting of the fall is great design. Through time you've been We didn't have to say goodbye And I know That through it all The hardest part of love is letting go But there's a greater love that holds us Pray for me And I'll pray for you common ground Won't you pray for me And I'll pray for you And one day love will bring us back around Painted on our tapestry We see the way it has to be Weaving through the laughter and the tears Won't you pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Pray that we will keep the common ground. Won't you pray for me, and I'll pray for you. One day love will bring us back around again. I know you. And I know you. We met a while back. In the hospital waiting room. Your name, it's Sue. And you're Deanne? You can relive like me. This is Katie, my new helper dog. That's Levi. You work for the FBI. And you're an actress. Have a seat. Come here often? Actually, this is my first time. Me too. But I was walking by, and I thought that I should come in. Me too. What's going on? You're leaving the FBI? No, a promotion. I'm moving to New York. That's great. I've been going through some changes myself. I've been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. MS. Thanks. You can pray for me. I will. You never know what life's gonna throw at you. But I'll be fine. That's my catcher. Well, 
I, I better get going. I have someone that will be picking me up. I... You live near here? Not far. Georgetown. Mitchell. If there's anything I can ever do to help out, I'd be happy to. Uh, I almost forgot I'm moving to New York. That's very kind of you to offer anyway. But I'm fine. The one thing I have is a lot of fun. And when something like this happens, you find out who they really are. And I've been blessed with some good ones. That's good. It's awesome. It's really nice talking with you again. You too. Come on, Katie. Let's go home. Oh, hi. Hi. Took the stairs? We didn't have time to walk this morning. We need some exercise. Oh, I was actually wanting to talk to you. Really? Uh, about what? Um, about your leaving and moving and everything. I see. I so Before you say anything, could I just tell you what it is I was planning to tell you? Okay. I, uh, I was up all night thinking about it, and uh, I didn't want you to go without you at least knowing what it was I was thinking. I understand that this is a great, great opportunity, and I would never want to stand in the way of your career advancement. But I want you to know that I wish you weren't going. We're all gonna miss you. As a team. And, uh... I'm gonna miss you. Personally. A lot. I, I just... I just want you to know that. Just who I was looking for. I got assigned this uh, fraud case, and I wondered if you could do an interview with a woman in Alexandria next Tuesday. She said she could meet you at 11. I'll have to get Bobby to help me. Sue isn't going to be here. She'll be at her new job. Did you change your mind again? <clears throat> no, I didn't. Did you what? decided to stay. I guess Lucy got here early and told everyone already, except you. There are things more important than career advancement. And most of them are standing in this room. Now, what was it you were saying in the hallway? Just welcome back. You too, buddy. Disco ball, but uh, didn't have enough notice. How unfortunate. Oh, come on, Lucy, you know what they say. Everything that's old is new again. And I've been told that it's even better the second time around. <laughs> oh, 